Good day to you. In this presentation, I'm going to tell you about my fascination with small platonic globes and the exciting simulations that we can run on their digital models. Can an architect reimagine the whole planet Earth? This is what Richard Buckminster Fuller tried to do by introducing the Dimaxion globe as a tool for political geographers, coining the word Dimaxion as a combination of the words dynamic, maximum, and tension. His goal was to create a representation of the planet Earth that would easily convert to a flat map with minimal distortions while still being a round globe. We asked ourselves if we could make a digital version of such a globe and animate the hypothetical fates of our planet on it. These are the only five polyhedrons that are perfectly regular for tiling a spherical surface into exactly equal polygonal facets, providing the most regular tessellations of a spherical globe. Well, the best platonic solid with the largest number of facets has only 20 triangles, but we could not possibly simulate the fate of the planet at the resolution of only 20 triangles and their dynamics. So we decided to subdivide it further into more triangles. Here is a simple picture showing how all distances on these globes are computed as geodesics or walks around the globe on triangular tiles. Such paths form the basis of most geographical concepts, especially because they show physical distances on the planet Earth for traveling by airplanes, cars, trains, ships, or even horses. If something is far away from you, then you are less likely to visit it or interact with it in any way. This could be the curse of geography, which is better known as the first law of geography, formulated by the famous American geographer Waldo Tobler. Everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. We are so accustomed to the idea of measuring distance with meter sticks or yard sticks that we might forget about the most universal measure of distance, time. If you can get somewhere faster than somewhere else, practically you are closer to that space. The same effect that railways have had in shrinking the size of Europe in time, a hypothetical hyperloop network can have on the whole planet Earth. So far, I've been referring to the idea of small world networks implicitly, but now I'm referring to the main concept literally, a small world in which you can get to know anybody just by making a few new friends. If we switch our notion of distance to the number of friends we have to make on a social network to get in touch with someone, then our world will get even smaller and more explicitly similar to the so-called small world networks on social media. My colleague Nan Bai will explain this further in his presentation. The late British mathematician John Conway invented this relatively simple game of life in the year 1970, which has had profound effects on the complexity theories of cities and landscapes, for example, in making land use transport interaction models. The Schelling segregation model is arguably the most important example of cellular automata models used for learning policy lessons on how relatively small and seemingly unimportant decisions and actions by individuals often lead to significant unintended consequences for a large group. In this famous example, Thomas Schelling shows that a slight and non-malicious preference to have neighbors of the same race eventually leads to a completely segregated city. This is a key example showing how complex network models can be used in simulations not only for making predictions, but also for understanding the mechanisms and forces that bring about change. In collaboration with the Y Factory Design Research Group at the Faculty of Architecture and the Built Environment of TU Delft, we designed the course Planet Maker in two rounds between the years 2017 and 2019. The first time for simulating what-if scenarios and envisioning future globes, and the second round for making digital simulation games. In the remainder of this talk, I will present some totally fictitious simulation models that we made for two reasons. Number one, raising awareness on the complexity of the fate of the dear old planet Earth. And number two, teaching the students some essential methods and techniques from generative sciences for simulating complex geospatial systems. The gist of the course Future Models in the Planet Maker Studios was to combine complex space networks models on polyhedral globes and complex process networks in physical board games and digital simulation games. In a short presentation, I cannot possibly bore you with the gory details of how we actually made the simulation models, but I can at least give you some hints and an example. We use cellular automata, agent-based models, gravity models, and Markov chains in particular to simulate diverse phenomena related to climate change, agriculture, migrations, trade flows, 
and their effect on the planetary landscape. In other words, the common denominator of all models was the changes made on the landscape technically called the finite colored land use labels of the triangular cells of the polyhedral globe. Here is an exemplary cellular automata model from PlanetMaker 1 simulating the economical dynamics brought about by local trades as a finite state machine whose cells are small triangles on an unrolled icosahedral map. Here you can see a screenshot of a simulation game prototype on renewable energy production and its effects on land use from the Planet Maker 1 studio. Here you can see multiple screenshots of the simulation game prototypes made by our students in the course Planet Maker 2. These models simulated the emergent dynamics of landscapes as complex consequences of the interplay of policies on trade, migration, energy production, agriculture and ecosystem with geographical distances, barriers, and feedback loops. Our global landscapes are constantly changing. We can use simulation game models not only to educate future practitioners, but also to improve our holistic understanding from the complexity of the processes underlying spatial, environmental, economic, or demographic dynamics. Understanding the mechanisms and forces resulting in change is necessary for formulating new policies. If we manage to understand and replicate such complex mechanisms, or at least identify their fundamental principles, we can use this understanding to nudge public behavior towards more sustainable futures. At the end of the day, small ideas shared by many people may be more powerful than plans dictated by a few. Here with I would like to thank all of these students and my colleagues at the Vive Factory and Design Informatics Research Groups for an enjoyable collaboration. Here I am leaving some references for those who might be interested to read more on how complexity theories can be utilized in making the next generation simulation models for understanding the dynamics of future landscapes. I am Piruz Nurian, an assistant professor of design informatics at the Delft University of Technology. Have a great day on Earth.